So we were studying how to compute expectation, variance, covariance, and so on of a random variable using a very simple numerical example. So in our numerical example, in our setting, there are only three possible states. The upcoming summer is either hot or mild or cold. This summer is hot with probability 0.5 is mild with probability 0.3 and it's chilly with probability 0.2. We had two random variables, x and y. x is the sales of your brewery, beer company, and y is the sales of your creamery, ice cream company. If the summer is hot, then the sales, their sales will be high, 9,000 pounds and 8,000 pounds respectively respectively. If the summer is cold, chilly, then beer doesn't sell very much, ice cream doesn't sell very much, so their sales are low. Last time we computed their expectations, their means, and it turned out that in this numerical example, both the creamery, excuse me, x is the brewery, so both brewery and creamery have the same mean or expected sales that is equal to 6.6 thousand pounds. So, in terms of the expected sales, your brewery and creamery are the same. Their performance is the same on average. But if you look at these distributions more carefully, you will notice that your brewery business is riskier than your creamery business. If summer is hot, the brewery sells 9,000 pounds. This is the best outcome of your brewery. And that's a lot of deviation from its average performance. That's very good. But if the summer is cold, then the sales of your brewery is as low as 3,000 pounds. That's like minus 2.4 thousand pounds deviation from, your, from the average performance of the brewery. But if you look at creamery, their best outcome is not as good as that of the brewery, at just 8,000 pounds. But on the other hand, even if you are unlucky so that the summer is chilly, your creamery can still sell 4,000 pounds, which is better than the worst outcome of your brewery. In other words, there is more variability in the performance of the brewery than in the performance of the creamery. How can we measure such risk, or you know, the variability in the performance of a random variable? Such risk is measured by the variance. Okay? Variability of the random variable is measured by the notion of variance. So let's see how to compute variance. To compute the variance of random variable x, first you should compute what is called the deviation. So deviation is the rea realized value minus its mean. For example, for state 1, the outcome, the realization of x is 9,000 pounds, the mean is 6.6, .6, and therefore the deviation is 9 minus 6.6, .6, equal to 2.4 thousand pounds. If, on the other hand, the outcome is 3 thousand pounds, the deviation from the mean is 3 minus 6.6 .6 equal minus 3.6 thousand pounds. Okay, so these are the deviations of realizations from its mean average level. Once you compute these deviations, then you square them. So this column is just a square of the previous column. So for example, for state one, 2.4 thousand pounds squared is 5.76 thousand pounds squared. Once you compute, once you compute squared deviations, then you just take 
weight the average of these squared deviations using probabilities as weights, and that will give you the variance of x. The variance of x is denoted as VAR x, and that's the weighted average of these deviations, 0.5 times 5.76 plus 0.3 times 2.56 plus 0.2 times 12.96. If you compute it using your calculator, it's 6.24 thousand pounds squared. And that's the variance. Same thing can be done for random variable y. First you compute deviations, you already know the means, so you compute the deviations and you square them, and you take the weighted average of these squared deviations, and that's the variance of y denoted as VARY, and that's 2.44 thousand pounds squared. You see, the variance is much larger for random variable x. And in this sense, variance actually captures the variability or risk of random variables. The problem of variance is that it doesn't have much intuition. What does thousand pounds squared mean? You see, if the original unit of the random variable is, let's say, meter or centimeter, then the unit of the variance is meter squared or centimeter squared. If the original unit is week or month or year, then the unit of the variance is week squared or month squared or year squared, which doesn't make any sense. The problem happens because in the process of computing the variance, we squared the numbers. For this reason, as a measure of risk or variability of a random variable, more popular than variance is the standard deviation, which is denoted by Greek letter sigma. So sigma x is the standard deviation of random variable x, just take square root of the variance and that will give you the standard deviation. So the standard deviation of x is square root of 6.24 thousand pounds squared, which is equal to 2.5 thousand pounds. Same for random variable y. Take the square root of the variance and you can see that the standard deviation of y is 1.56 thousand pound. Now you can see that the standard deviation of y is much smaller than that of x. So in this sense, y is less risky than x. Now, standard deviation has more intuition than variance. It's basically sort of the average deviation from the mean. So the mean of the brewery sales is 6.6 thousand pounds. But sometimes, if you are lucky, the sales can be much higher than the mean. If you are unlucky, the sales can be much lower than the mean. You don't know. So you are interested in how large that deviation could be. And the standard deviation gives you a good measure for that. So x is the standard deviation being 2.5 thousand pounds indicates that you shouldn't be surprised even if the actual performance is 2.5 thousand pounds higher than the average level. You shouldn't be surprised even if it's lower than the mean by 2.5 thousand pounds. Okay? that much deviation is considered common or standard. Okay, that's the idea of the standard deviation. Now, variance and standard deviation are as important as expectation. 
Imagine you are a football coach of some professional team and you are facing two potential players. Suppose these two players' performance is similar or the same on average. But suppose that the former player is riskier or has more variability in his performance than the second player in the sense that the first player sometimes does an outstanding job, but sometimes he makes a terrible error, whereas the second player constantly does a decent job. Imagine such a situation. Okay, the average performance is the same, but the variability is very different between these two players. As a football coach, the usage of these two players should be very different. If, let's say, there are only three minutes left and your, te your team is winning, probably you would go with the second player, the safer one. But if your team is losing, you might want to go with the former player, the riskier one, because sometimes he does an outstanding performance. Okay? So for this reason, the notion of variance and standard deviation as a measure that captures the riskiness or variability of a random variable is very important. So, yeah, you should remember how to compute them.